Welcome back guys, Lone Star Patriot here. Thanks for joining me. So before we get started, I wanna take a quick detour and cover a little bit of history for all you history buffs out there. Now, obviously as my name indicates, the Lone Star Patriot, I was born and raised in Texas and Texas recently celebrated Texas Independence Day. That was on March 2nd. Now, back in 1836, Texas actually gained its independence from Mexico and became its own sovereign country as the Republic of Texas. Now, on December 29th of 1845, the state of Texas was actually incorporated into the Union as a 28th state in the Union. So anyway, with that aside, we'll move on to today's video. Now, today's video covering the Budget Rifle Upgrade Series, we're going to be installing the BCM KMR Alpha Handguard. It's the 15-inch version. So what we'll do is cover some of the specifics on that particular handguard and then move inside to start the install. So stay tuned. All right, guys, so to cover some of the specifics of this particular rail, now, again, this is the BCM KMR Alpha 15-inch rail. And so to break down what each of those means, the BCM indicates that it's by Bravo Company Manufacturing. Now, the KMR stands for Key Mod Rail. And in terms of the Key Mod, this particular rail has seven different mounting positions. So you have your standard three, six, and nine locations, but you also have positions at the 45-degree location between 12 and three, three and six, six and nine and nine and twelve so you definitely have a lot of real estate for mounting accessories which is nice now in terms of alpha this is a hundred percent aluminum and according to bcm the total weight of the rail including the mounting hardware comes in at an even 11 ounces so it's certainly a lightweight rail now in terms of the overall dimension of 15 inches that's measured from the end of the rail here which matches up with your upper receiver and then extends out to the end of the flare at the end of the rail. Now, a couple other things to note is that the 12 o'clock position is full Picatinny rail or 1913 rail, and also it is T-marked. Now, this particular finish is a hard coat, non-reflective, black anodized finish. And then also the dimensions of this rail measure one and a half inches from outside to outside or from flat to flat and then the inside diameter measures 1.3 inches. So let's go ahead and step inside and get started with the install. So stay tuned. Okay, so to get started with the installation of the new gas block as well as the new gas tube, I first wanna talk about the gas block. Now this particular gas block is a BCM low profile gas block. Now the inside diameter of this gas block is three quarters of an inch. Now that inside diameter is directly corresponding to the outside diameter of the barrel at the gas port location. So you definitely need to match up the outside diameter of the barrel with the inside diameter of your gas port. Now, as far as the gas tube, I've chosen to replace the stainless gas tube that came with the rifle with the Spikes Tactical carbine length gas tube. Now this is melanited, which I prefer. But one thing to note is that if you reuse the original stainless gas tube, you have to replace your roll pin for a smaller gas block such as the BCM low profile gas block. That's due to the fact that the original gas block is much wider than the BCM replacement, for example, which requires a shorter roll pin length. Now, for the roll pin, I'll be using a 564 roll pin punch. And then for the hammer, I'll be using an eight ounce brass hammer. Now, one thing to note is that I went ahead and drove the pin initially to get it started. It's very difficult to do, so I did that off camera. And then also, I'd suggest that you make witness marks on both the gas tube as well as the gas block to have the proper alignment as you drive this pin through. So I went ahead and located the gas tube correctly to align with the hole in the gas block and then made witness marks on this side to give me an alignment as I drive this pin through. So let's go ahead and finish the pin install. And you want to drive that just flush with the surface.
Okay, so now the roll pin is driven flush with the gas block on each side. We can now take this assembly and install it onto the barrel. Now, one thing to note is that this particular gas block has two set screws. And so for that, I'll be using a 3 seconds Allen key. So we'll install the gas block over the barrel. And then you just want to be sure that your gas tube aligns with your upper receiver. And then you want to push your gas block all the way to where it seats against the barrel. And then from there, you want to check the alignment to be sure that your gas tube is concentric with the barrel. And then from there, we'll take the Allen key and tighten the screws on the gas block. And then from there, we'll go ahead and remove this assembly from the vise, and that way we can better tighten the set screws on the gas block. Okay, so what we'll do next is I've, of course, removed this assembly from the vise, and that way we can install the index plate. Now, this particular index plate, of course, came with the BCM rail. Now, this index plate will be inserted with these metal ends into the upper receiver. And this particular index plate, just like the name indicates, helps to index the rail with the upper receiver. So that's installed. And then also the instructions indicate that you can lubricate the barrel nut for ease of the installation of the rail by using any kind of oil. It specifically says do not use grease. So what I like to use is just a synthetic motor oil. This is a 5W20. So we'll apply a little bit of oil to the barrel nut and spread that around. And now that that's done, we can remount this assembly into the vise. And then now we can get started with the installation of the new rail. Okay, so to get started with the installation of the rail, now the instructions do explicitly state that you should heat the rail up for at least 60 seconds to ease the installation. So I've gone ahead and preheated this. It also does state that you can incrementally heat this again at 15 second intervals if you need to. Now, it also does indicate you can use a soft mallet to aid in the install. However, you don't wanna wiggle the rail on. So you wanna to try to keep your mallet and your force concentric with the barrel to align the barrel with this index plate. So what we'll do is go ahead and heat it for a remaining 15 or so seconds and then start the install. So I'm just using a regular hair dryer on, on hot and on high heat. I will slide the rail over the barrel. And against our barrel nut. I 
That's certainly a tight fit. So now we'll take our wooden block and our mallet. We just want to double check the alignment and just keep driving it. Now we want to be sure that the rail itself aligns with the index plate. And then from there we can drive it home. Okay, so I went ahead and finished the install of the rail. Now, you just want to be patient and the telltale sign that you're finished is actually when the alignment of the bolt holes through the rail align exactly with the barrel nut. Now, one thing to note is that there will be a slight gap between the rail and the upper receiver on the top here, and the instructions state that that gap should be no less than five thousandths of an inch and no greater than forty thousandths of an inch. Now, I measured mine with a feeler gauge and mine came out to sixteen thousandths of an inch, so I'm certainly within the acceptable range. Now, to finish the install, I went ahead and degreased the two bolts here with a contact cleaner. This is just a brake parts cleaner. It's non chlorinated And then I also applied the thread locker that was that was provided with the kit. Now, this comes with two cross bolts. One actually has a star-shaped head, and that is referred to as the notched cross bolt. And then the other one has just a round-shaped head, and that's referred to as the locking bolt. And then it comes with a clamp block, which would be installed on each side of the rail, as well as a torque wrench. So to get started, we'll put one of our clamp blocks on, and we'll take our locking bolt first and insert that through. And then take our opposite clamp block and install that. And just be careful that the threads align. And then the instructions do state to give yourself several revolutions before you complete the tightening of these two bolts. So we'll take our notched cross bolt and install it from the other side. And again, same thing, leave a couple revolutions. And then, as you can see, the way this is going to work is that the locking bolt, which, is be, which would be on this side here, actually extends through and then seats in the gap of the notch screw to prevent those two bolts from rotating and coming loose. So it's certainly a neat system. So what we'll do is go ahead and continue to tighten these bolts. I 
Again, alternating one at a time. And then you want to ensure that your notch bolt, in fact, both bolts, but the heads should be recessed or at least flush with the edge of the clamp block. And then from there, we'll finally tighten the locking bolt. And then hopefully you can see that the way that mates up with the two bolts preventing themselves from coming loose based on the locking bolt against the notch bolt. Okay, so one more thing to note on tightening these locking bolts. Now the instructions do explicitly state to not over tighten them and it gives a torque specification of 30 to 40 inch pounds. Now what I'll do also is I'll roll in a picture at the end here to show you a close up of this locking system. So the last thing we'll do of course is reassemble the upper and then we can attach the upper to the lower. So we'll take our charging handle and reinstall that and then take our bolt carrier group and then reinstall our upper to our lower. All right guys, so to wrap up today's video covering the installation of the BCM KMR Alpha 15 inch rail on the Anderson rifle, a part of the budget rifle upgrade series. Now let's first talk about price. Now this particular rail comes in right around the $200 mark. So while it's not the least expensive option, it's certainly a quality option, especially given the quality you'd expect from BCM. Now, in terms of comparable products to this particular rail, I feel that it's on the low end compared to some of the other offerings out there from other companies. So it's a quality component, and for a little bit more money compared to an inexpensive option, you can certainly use this rail on a higher end build or upgrade to another rifle. Now, as you saw from the video, this is certainly an easy install. With a little bit of patience, you can certainly do this yourself. So hopefully this gives you another option to consider. Or if you have this particular rail, it shows you how to do the install yourself. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And God bless Texas.
Now, just a quick history lesson for you history buffs. I want to cover some of the history of Texas. So, history, continuation of our rub it, rubble. All right, guys, so to run through, run. God bless. Overall, let's. Get started with the installation. So we'll move in stock. Market rail or fleet, fleet, fleet. 